Hey everyone, this is Andrew, and welcome back to another Clip Studio Paint tutorial video. So for this tutorial video, I had someone ask me um, in one of the comments of one of my other videos that when he imports a 3D model, he can't find a way to scale the 3D model because it's when you import a 3D model that's not from Clip Studio Paint, they usually um, are very large so he's trying to figure out how to shrink it down to size so that it, everything matches um, or everything's to scale um, I have done a video about how to scale the uh, 3d models um, that are already in clip studio paint and it it's gonna kind of work the same I'll leave a link in the description on how you can do that but uh, so for this tutorial video, I'm going to show you how I import 3d models from outside sources and you can you'll see that they usually import very large and so I'll show you guys how I shrink them down to size so that it matches um, the 3d figures for clip studio paint. I will also show you how you can extract a line drawing from your 3d models so that it will speed up your drawing um, it won't be perfect but it'll like I said it'll speed up your drawing so you won't um, have to spend too much time drawing uh, the, the uh, whatever your 3d model is alright so let me just start by showing you where I grab 3d models from so basically I use this website here it's called CG Trader um, they have several uh, 3D models. Uh, you just type in the search bar here. I typed in the word car, and these um, 3D models of cars have come up. They also have this uh, uh, check mark here where it says free. So some of these 3D models are actually free, so you can actually uh, grab these for free. The only thing you have to look for is um, the type of uh, 3d model it is so if you come down here to format uh, clip studio paint works with uh, FBX or dot uh, FBX and dot OBJ those are the two that I think uh, clip studio paint works with I in clip studio may work with other types of files but for sure I know that clip studio works with FBX and OBJ I usually download the OBJ models because um, I don't want to I think with the FBX you can uh, move them around like little pieces uh, like say for this 3d car you can move the tire um, independent of the car I'm not sure but an object is basically one solid piece um, and so I'm not entirely sure but usually like I said I always go with OBJ so um, I'm not going to show you how it's how to download from this website, but they're pretty much all the same. You just click this uh, whatever 3D model you find that you want, and you click download, and it downloads to your computer. But what what I will show you is how to then import it into Clip Studio Paint, and you will see that the 3D model is much larger than. Um, anything else if you were to grab a 3d model from inside the software so to import a 3d model what you have to do is go to file import 3d data and this will open up a window and the next thing you have to do is pretty much find wherever uh, you have your uh, wherever you downloaded your uh, 3d object you have to find it um, so I have a folder uh, for my comic book that I have several uh, 3d objects so I'm gonna pick this 3d object it's a Ford Mustang and you can see it's an OBJ so just select the file and click open and so here is the 3d model um, now you can see that um, 
right now it looks um, fairly uh, normal size you would think um, but there are a couple things that are strange about this you notice this uh, black line here that's actually the floor so one of the first things I do with 3d models when I import them is I click this square here and that grounds it so now the uh, the car is on the ground and you can see the shadow underneath it so that's one thing that I do the other thing I do is I zoom out just to get uh, the car uh, completely on the paper now another thing you'll notice is if I zoom in here uh, it kind of goes away but you see that little there's a little black square right underneath the car um, that is actually the um, the floor of the 3d model of clip studio paint I'll show you by what I'll do is I'll import a character so when I import this character here you'll see how tiny he is uh, let me get rid of this so see he's very very tiny compared to the gigantic car and so that's what we're gonna try and um, scale so you can do two things um, you can uh, you can scale the car smaller to match the little man or you can scale the man to 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 meet the car what I like to do is I like to keep the 3d object inside the 3d floor that clips to you paint um, uh, it gives you so what I like to do is in this case be, the car is much bigger so I'm gonna make the car smaller instead of making the man bigger and the way I do that is is this way so you'll know I have two objects in my uh, canvas if you come over here to the left side where it has the tool properties there is this uh, 3d drawing figure and there's a drop down if you click this drop down you'll see that you have the cameras the ambient lights the parallel lights and then you'll have your Ford Mustang and um, this character I call a general he's a, a general in the Marine Corps is a character I created so so what you want to do is click the the 3d object that you want to scale in this case the Mustang this is the the object I want to scale so I'm gonna select the Ford Mustang and I'll click outside and so now if you click on this little plus mark here what you'll see is more options underneath 3d object and one of those is object scale this now you will have to uh, play around with but I usually go halfway so 50 and I'll see what that looks like so now the car is a little bit smaller but still oh um, once I scale it I hit the um, I ground the car back down to the ground um, but you can see the little man is still the car is still bigger than the man so I'm gonna go have to go lower than 50 I'm gonna have to go let's go to 10 so now we're getting closer now you can see the the man is way off from where the car is so I'm going to go back to the tool properties 3d objects I'm gonna select my 3d character and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that character by using this uh, option here it's the 3d cube with a cross on top of it this allows me to move the uh, character in 3d space while still touching the ground so so let's see if we can get that car even smaller so again I'll go to the 3d object drop down select 
the 3D, the Ford Mustang, and then uh, click outside. And I want to scale it. Let's go down to the lowest number. I believe one is the lowest scale factor you can go. And so now, again, you can ground this. And I'm going to move the camera. So now we can see if we zoom in here. Now we can see the 3D floor of Clip Studio Paint. But where is the little man? Oh, and you may notice that it is very, very tiny. Like here's the whole canvas and it's a very tiny speck. No problem. Just zoom in with your camera. There you go. Well, I want to keep that the little person there. So again, I'm going to go to the tool properties, select the character, and then I'm going to move him in 3D space closer to the car. Once he is close to the car, I'm going to zoom in the camera so these uh, objects will come closer uh, to the uh, canvas. I don't need to be so far away. Um, and so now it becomes a a uh, a preference thing because if this was a let's say he was a short man, uh, somebody who was five foot five, maybe that's how tall he would be compared to the car. But if this person was six foot tall, um, you kind of know that a person. Uh, well, if you don't know, Ford Mustang sits pretty low. Um, so he would actually be a little bit taller than, than this car. So I think I've already gone as low as I can for scaling the Mustang, which was a scale factor of one. I might could go lower. Yeah, you can you can go lower. Um, so point one is actually the smallest, but I'm going to keep the car at at one, a scale factor of one. So in this case, if I want to make the character taller, I would just scale the man um, more than a hundred percent. So you can tap these little arrows up and down or you can type in a, a number but usually uh, when I do a character next to a Ford Mustang um, I usually keep the, the roof of the car no higher than the armpit I think that's a good measurement for a Ford Mustang because again, like I said, um, a Ford Mustang, they they sit pretty low on the ground. So I'm going to move this character as close as possible to the car. Uh, okay. And so if I look at it, I can see I, I want to make him a little bit taller. So I keep making him, whoa, that's a bit too much. I would say that's about right. So now um, my character is scaled to uh, the car. And so now all you gotta do is pose your character however, however you wanna pose them. And then also move the camera how you wanna, however you wanna move him, the camera angle. Um, another thing you can do is um, when when you have the the two 3D objects on the same uh, raster layer is when you move the light it affects both of them the same so that's pretty cool so that's how you can scale um, 3D objects that you have downloaded from other websites um, to fit uh, your character's size uh, again, always try to, or in, in my opinion, I think it's best to always try to size the um, 
the 3D objects that you've downloaded down to uh, Clip Studio's uh, size. I would not, in my opinion, I wouldn't scale the person to match the the 3D objects. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it, it takes too much um, computer resources to to generate something that big. Um, it, I've had my Clip Studio Paint crash sometimes when I use um, 3D objects from other other websites. I think it's because it's just too much uh, memory that it takes to generate it. Uh, so I tried to scale them down uh, as sm small as possible. Um, and if I can't get it small enough, and then I'll start scaling the the Clip Studio Paint 3D models up to match the uh, 3D objects. So that's again, that's how you can scale uh, 3D objects in Clip Studio Paint. Now, what I'm going to show you is um, instead of so typically what you would do after this is you would put a raster layer over your 3d models and maybe lower the opacity on the 3d model so it's kind of lighter and then what you would do is you know you just uh you would draw over you know um oh let me grab a g pen you would then just draw over the the 3d model right so and then when you make the 3d models disappear you would have your a drawing of of the uh, of the car uh, the thing is is that's very time-consuming and um, so to save you some time uh, what you're gonna do or what I'm gonna show you now is you can actually uh, extrapolate lines uh, from this 3d model and the way you do that is is uh, again you you select the uh, 3d model layer and what I like to do is I don't really need a line drawing of the the man I only want it of the car so this is what you're gonna do uh, again select the 3d model layer uh, click uh, this little tool navigator it's a 3d box with an arrow on it and this will bring up the tool properties here on the left tool properties and again go to your 3d drawing figures and what you want to do is click this little eyeball here and that'll make the the person or any other 3d object that you want invisible so we only we're only going to look at um, the object that we want a line drawing from so uh, let's say that's that's the angle you want and everything um, Don't worry about the light. We're gonna get rid of that um, That layer and you'll see here in a bit. So now the only thing on that 3d model layer is the car So go up here to layer and You'll see this uh, selection called LT conversion of layer You select that and this little pop-up window comes up um there's a lot of things you can do with this. I haven't really messed with it too much. I pretty much, I always leave it as default. So the only thing I do after this is uh, make sure this is uh, selected, extract line of texture. Make sure that's selected and then just click okay. And so now Clip Studio Paint's gonna do its thing. Um, again, you can mess with those settings and, and see uh, all kinds of different results but for me I just leave it as default all I do is click OK and then what Clip Studio Paint is doing now is that it is uh, extracting a two-dimensional uh, line drawing from the three-dimensional object and so there it is and so what uh, Clip Studio Paint does is you still have your 3D model. In fact, here it is right here. But it'll make it invisible. And what Clip Studio Paint will do, it'll, it will create a folder. And inside this folder, you'll see that there's uh, two outline drawings 
and three um, tones um, that's kind of creating these uh, half tones here the grays and, and dark grays and then the very last one is uh, called fill one is pretty much white paint um, that way I mean just in case your paper was a different color uh, so there's actually the whole car is painted white uh, so these white spots you can't tell because the paper is white itself but in any case what I like to do is I like to take this outline too, the one that's um, monochrome you can tell it's monochrome because this little icon here is specifically black and white no other color this other one called uh, outline one is kind of half tone there's some grays in there um, so or it's it's called grayscale I believe I grab this one I grab outline two and I bring it outside the folder and make the folder invisible and so now I have a an outline drawing of of the car so I don't have to draw it now the one thing I will say about this is that um, it looks very computer generated so there are some lines here that you might want to uh, erase uh, there are some lines maybe that you want to um, smooth out maybe um, or make more rounded uh, like these like this would for me in my in my opinion this is too too sharp so I would just leave it like that and then I would add maybe some some uh, to indicate that it, it curves it's not a instead of having a straight line like this indicating a harsh turn I would just put these little just to make it look like it's more rounded um, and again this is monochrome so if you zoom in here you'll see that it's it's purely black and white so these little jagged uh, lines is not really gonna work for me when I do my comic books so here's what you want to do what you want to do once once you finish uh, touching up your uh, your outline drawing here like once you finish making some lines more curved than others or adding details um, what you want to do next is uh, make a copy of this layer so the way I make copies is just control C or uh, on a Mac uh, command C and then command V and then Victor so now you have a copy um, and then just what I do is make the original invisible and this I do a copy so in case I mess up I can always go back to the original copy and then uh, fix what I messed up so on the uh, outline to copy make sure that's selected go to filter go to blur oh there's one thing I have to do and that is rasterize so go to layer it's already rasterized oh I'm sorry we have to change the layer property because uh, right now the property is if you see look right here on the right hand side you'll see layer property it's monochrome monochrome there's only black and white no gray exists so what you want to do is change the property of the layer to grayscale now the 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 the, the layer can accept uh, colors gray colors so anything between black and white uh, it can accept but you, if you zoom in you'll still see that it's still black and white because that's originally how it was so what we're gonna do is if you go now that the layer property is grayscale if you go to filter blur and go to Gaussian blur now here you can um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit you can see it kind of blurs the line but what it does is it kind of fools the eye to make these lines a little bit smoother this is the, the same property that uh, anti-aliasing uh, when you draw your lines 
Uh, usually, I mean, you can leave it however you want, or you can even go lower. If it's too blurry for you, you can go, go lower. So the closer you get to, to one, the more, the less blur it'll have. Um, you can see two is not enough, maybe three. So you want it to be blurry enough to make the lines look smooth, but not so blurry that you lose too much detail. So I think five, five will, yeah, five looks good. So I'm gonna hit okay. And this all depends on your drawing. Uh, so, so maybe it doesn't look like too much of a difference, but for me, it does, um, it does uh, make a difference to me. Um, again, so I can see here that, see these lines here, they're just too sharp. This little corner here, that's too sharp. I should have rounded it, um, rounded it off before I, I did all this. But again, I can always delete this, go back to my original because I have my original saved, make my corrections in the original, and then do the process over again. Blur it and it, it'll look fine. But and so that's one really quick way that you can uh, extrapolate a line drawing from a 3D model. So kind of a long video, but um, I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, I make Clip Studio Paint tutorial videos. Um, I don't have a schedule really. It's just I make them when I, when I get an idea or when I discover something new. Um, if you have any questions about uh, anything you, you want to try and do in Clip Studio, but you don't can't figure out how to do it, uh, leave me a message, uh, a comment in any of my videos, um, and I'll see it. And if I can't answer it in a comment, um, I'll make a video of it, and that way everybody can learn how to do it. So again, um, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.